Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us at CoLS. My name is Livia Bussini, and I'm a Regional Director of Solutions Engineering at DBT Labs, and I'll be the host of the session. The title of this session is Build an Open Lake House with DBT Labs and Dreamio, and will be joined by Jeremiah Morrow. Jeremiah is responsible for all things partner at Dreamio. He's been in sales, marketing, and analyst relations for a wide range of tech companies for the last 10 years, including Vertica, OVH, and Gartner. He lives in the Rio Bay area, Annapolis, Maryland, with his wife and their colleague shepherd, Dexter. Before we watch Jeremiah's session, I wanted to share some recommendations on how to get the most out of the session. All chat conversation is taking place in the Coalesce Build an Open Lake House channel of DBT Slack. If you're not part of the chat, you have time to join right now. Visit getdbt.com slash community. I repeat, dbt, sorry, getdbt.com slash community and search for Coalesce Build an Open Lake House when you enter the space. We encourage you to ask other attendees questions, make comments or react at any point in the channel. And if you can, having two windows, one with Slack and one with session opened side by side works really well too. After the session, Jeremiah will be available in the Slack channel to answer your questions. However, we encourage you to ask questions at any point during the session. Now let's get started. Over to you, Jeremiah. Thank you, Olivia. Uh, and I am happy to discuss uh, the Battle of the Bay Areas uh, in Slack as well after this presentation. Um, as Olivia mentioned, I'm going to be talking about building an open data lake house with DBT Labs and Dremio. Um, real quick, just want to go through an agenda for this session. Uh, I'm going to level set with uh, the data explosion that we're probably all aware of. I want to talk about how that data explosion has uh, necessitated a change in data architectures uh, and why the open data lake house uh, has come into prominence and is um, the best architecture, in our opinions, uh, for building a platform for getting analytics into the hands of end users. Um, and then I'm going to talk about uh, some of the similarities, um, some of the reasons if you love DBT, why you would also love Dremio. Um, and that comes down to built for SQL. Um, open and, uh, and our commitment to data as code. Um, as Olivia mentioned, uh, Q&A will be going ongoing in Slack. Um, my solution architect and better half, Brett Roberts, is in there uh, and happy to answer any questions you might have as the session goes along. So first I want to level set with the data explosion. Uh, there's more data than ever before, and it's coming from different sources uh, than it has in the past. Uh, IDC um, suggests that uh, by 2025, there's going to be 175 zettabytes of data worldwide. And as much of that data is going to be in the cloud as on premises. There's more data consumers. Um, there's a growing number of people in our organizations who need access to data and need access fast. Uh, and not all of them are technical. Uh, there are business analysts uh, as well who need access to data. Uh, and so we need to reconsider how we get data into the hands of, of end users and how they communicate with data. All of this means there's a lot more complexity. Uh, there are new sources, there are new users and use cases, and all of that means that we need to think about uh, our, our data architecture. So I want to take us back to the beginning. Um, decades ago, uh, all of our companies invested heavily in the enterprise data warehouse. And the enterprise data warehouse was really good uh, at what it was designed to do. Uh, it was designed to store uh, structured data primarily from business systems in the data center. Uh, and then it could provide reporting in a reasonable amount of time uh, and connect to BI and visualization tools. The problem uh, is that a lot of the data that we're collecting now uh, is not structured data. Uh, a lot of it is semi-structured data and unstructured data. And the EDW was never designed uh, to store or analyze uh, these new data sources. So companies invested in data lakes, uh, first with Hadoop uh, and then with cloud object storage. And data lakes were also really good at what they were initially designed to do. Uh, they were great as a cheap repository for a large volume and, uh, and variety of data. 
they were good for small scale exploratory data science projects. But the one thing that they couldn't do was replicate the business intelligence and reporting uh, at enterprise scale that a lot of companies needed. And so what you see in a lot of companies today is this cooperative architecture, uh, one or multiple data warehouses sitting alongside one or multiple data lakes. Both of them are still essentially doing what they were always designed to do. Uh, BI and reporting is done in the EDW. Uh, data science is, is done in the data lake. And then if you need, uh, if a data consumer needs a really important source of data, uh, the data team needs to build an ETL or ELT pipeline and move that data into the data warehouse so that it can be consumed. The challenge uh, now and in the future is that the majority of the fastest and newest source, fastest growing and newest sources of data are going to be semi-structured data and unstructured data. And the first destination for that data is going to be cloud data lakes. And as consumers need access to that data for business intelligence and reporting, data teams need to build uh, ETL pipelines. Many of these ETL pipelines are manual and ad hoc. Uh, and so what you get is this complex web down here of ETL pipelines and then to meet um, performance requirements of various uh, BI and reporting tools, uh, data teams need to build and maintain custom data copies in the form of uh, BI cubes and extracts. All of this results in a really complex web of processes. Um, it, 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 all of the changes to this web uh, are manual. Um, and you get decreasing data scope and flexibility as you move up towards the data consumer, where data consumers today need much more flexibility. Um, all of this results in a backlog of data access requests. And some of the customers that we talk to say that it takes them weeks or months uh, to turn around uh, data requests. So uh, the answer uh, for, in our opinion, is the open data lake house. Um, at its core, the data lake house uh, is bringing the data management, data governance, and data analytics capabilities typically found in a data warehouse to a data lake environment. And the Dremio Open Data Lake House consists of uh, two products. The first is Dremio Sonar, which is based on Apache Arrow. Um, it is ANSI SQL functionality directly on the data lake and other data sources as well. It provides query acceleration, um, automatic query acceleration through uh, materialized views that help you read the data uh, in an optimal way. Um, and then it provides a semantic layer that gives uh, technical and non-technical users access to both the data lake uh, as well as other data sources to join and query the data um, when they need to. Um, so that's Dremio Sonar. Um, but the second product is perhaps the most important because SQL query engines uh, on the data lake have been around for a while. Uh, what's really been missing from the lake house uh, to make it a lake house has been the metadata layer. Um, and so Dremio Arctic is an intelligent meta store um, for Apache Iceberg. Uh, it provides data governance capabilities. Uh, it automatically optimizes data uh, and it provides get like uh, management uh, for data, um, get like change management for data through, through the meta store. Um, so the core of this, um, the, the benefits are uh, easy and open. It's easy because it's fully managed uh, and it only takes a few minutes to get started. And it's open because it's based on open standards, technologies and processes. So Dremio Sonar built on Apache Arrow uh, allows you to analyze data in Iceberg as well as other table formats and even in relational and NoSQL databases without actually having to move that data around. Um, data joins exist as simple SQL statements, um, and you analyze them in the data in place. Um, Dremio Arctic, on the other side, uh, is based on Apache Iceberg, which is quickly gaining traction uh, as one of the most popular open table formats. Um, and companies can use Dremio uh, Arctic um, with other uh, execution engines like Spark or Flink uh, if that is the best tool for the job.
Um, so the Open Data Lakehouse centralizes data management and data governance and also provides broad access to data for analytics for all of your data consumers. Um, it eliminates the need for manual and ad hoc ETL pipelines uh, by providing direct access to the data lake. Um, it enables users to explore and build dashboards uh, at interactive speed and with very high concurrency. Um, and it provides the data management, governance, and security that have long tied organizations to the data warehouse. So now I want to go into why DBT users would love Dremio. Um, and I think there are a lot of reasons, but I've boiled it down to uh, three of, of my favorite. Um, the first is SQL for everyone. Um, if you go onto indeed.com or any other job board, you'll see that SQL is by far the most popular data skill set in the enterprise, um, even with the growth of Python and R. Um, we believe that SQL enables broad and immediate adoption of tools. There's no reason to upskill or uh, hire new talent um, or have to retrain any of your analysts. Uh, all of it just works with the skills that they have. Um, it also enables self-service access for data consumers. Um, business analysts can work with data in Dremio just as easily as a data scientist or a data architect can. Um, and that gets data into the hands of end users much faster. Um, the second is built on open standards. Um, so as I mentioned, Dremio Sonar is based on Apache Arrow, which is one of the most popular open source SQL engines. Um, and then Dremio Arctic is based on Iceberg, uh, which is quickly gaining a lot of popularity um, for, uh, for its open table format. Um, open standards uh, eliminate the risk of lock-in and lock-out. Uh, a lot of companies struggled uh, as they move to the cloud because of proprietary data warehouses, putting all of your data into an open table format and making it accessible eliminates the risk of lock-in if you need to change tools. Uh, and it allows you to work with the tools that you want to use um, and not be locked out of a certain technology. Um, with Dremio, you're able to use best of breed execution engines. Um, if you have a long running ETL job in Spark, uh, that's better for... Uh, that's better than Arrow uh, potentially. Um, and Arrow is much better for interactive speed analytics. So bring the best tool for the job. Um, and then the, the last point here is quickly adopt the next wave of innovation. Um, we have seen seismic shifts in data architecture over the years. Uh, keeping your data in open table formats allows you to be agile uh, and quickly innovate uh, with the newest tools. And the third piece is data as code. This is really uh, central to DBT's value proposition uh, and certainly something Dremio believes as well. Uh, we believe that data should be as easy to use as code is in software development. And so just like DBT has brought many um, Git-like functions into uh, data architecture, uh, Dremio Arctic delivers Git-like data management capabilities particularly with data change management, uh, ensuring that your customers have, that your internal customers have the access to the freshest and newest data um, and, the, and the correct version. So what does all this mean uh, for you and for your data consumers? Um, the first is achieving faster time to insight. Uh, and that comes from being able to get data into the hands of end users quickly being able to give all of your end users a consistent view of the data uh, because it is in place and it's a no copy architecture. Um, and in the execution engine, uh, Dremio Sonar is the execution engine. Um, you can make your data engineers more productive. They can spend more time uh, innovating with data and less time working through a, a backlog of requests and managing uh, the architecture. Um, you make data consumers self-sufficient. Um, so all of your data consumers have the ability to uh, join and query data on their own. Um, Dremio as a semantic layer dramatically increases the self-sufficiency of all of your data consumers, uh, both technical and non-technical. Um, and the final piece is reducing data infrastructure cost and complexity. 
um, with a dramatically simplified data lake uh, platform. Um, you don't have to spend all of your time building manual ad hoc uh, ETL processes to, to get hand, data into the hands of, of your end users. Um, so that is most of what I have uh, for you in terms of the formal presentation. Um, quick, uh, quick note, you can get started with the Open Data Lake House for free today. Uh, sign up at dremio.com forward slash get started. Um, it, Dremio Cloud is free forever. Um, all you pay for is AWS infrastructure. Uh, if you want to see Dremio plus DBT in action, um, I wrote a blog post that just went up today and has a great video um, demonstration of, of DBT plus Dremio in action. Um, so check that out. Um, definitely connect with me on Slack, connect with Brett on Slack, and uh, we'll be happy to answer any of the questions that you have. Thank you for the presentation, Jeremiah. If you would like to join the Q&A with our speaker, stay in the Coalesce Build an Open Lake House channel on the DBT Community Slack to submit all of your questions and comments. If not, the next session's title Extend the runway, a deep dive into data warehouse costs and why metrics are even more valuable than you think they are. We'll be starting at 2.10 p.m. CDT. Thank you again, Jeremiah. Thank you, everyone. And we hope to see you there.